What's up guys? My name is Vyos Curtis, and I know the title of this video sounds like clickbait, but it's actually legit. I can't remember who actually showed me this exercise, but I think it's been the best thing for helping get my back tuck to the point it is today. It's been the best exercise, um, so I legitimately believe in the title of this video. In a sense, what would the single best exercise be for a back tuck? A lot of people might say, probably a back tuck itself, and I would actually agree with that. Um, but I wouldn't call that an exercise, I would call that repping the actual move, so that doesn't count. This exercise basically mimics the actual technique and the actual movements of a back tuck and lets you work on those movements and perfect those body positions without actually having to throw yourself in the air. Alright, so let me show you the exercise. As you can see, it's kind of just like doing a back tuck while lying on your back. I'm gonna break it down even farther. You wanna start out in a hollow body position. So you lie down normally, lift your feet up, lift your arms up, and you wanna be flexing your whole core, and you want your lower back to be touching the ground. So you don't want any space under your back here. You wanna be pushing your abs in towards the ground so that you can make this shape, so that you're actually rounded like this. And this is actually an exercise as well. These are rollers. Rollers are also a really good exercise for helping you get your hollow body position because they will really train you to push your lower back into the ground and create that curve. The reason it's important to get your hollow body position really good and really proper is because when you jump into the air for your back tuck or for your back flip, um, you're jumping into that exact position. So you don't want to jump and swing your arms back and actually end up arching all the way backwards. You want to jump and you want to stop at this position here. So. You start in a hollow body position, and then the second position is a tuck. So this is the same tuck that you'll do in your back tuck. It's the same exact position, and there's a couple key elements here. When you're bringing your knees up to tuck, it's exactly the same as a back tuck. You don't want to bring your chest forward at all. You want to leave your chest back, and you want to bring your knees up to your chest without your chest meeting in the middle. Um, your knees have to come all the way to your chest. So this would be wrong. It has to look like this. And then you should roll back if you do it right, because your chest will stay in one spot, your knees will meet it, so then you'll feel like you're rolling back right onto your head. That might actually be a little bit uncomfortable, but just make sure you don't roll back too hard on your head and make sure you're um, on something soft. Because actually, even when it comes to the hollow body position itself, you're, you, you'll be pushing your spine into the ground. So you want to make sure you're actually doing it on something soft and not on hard wood or hard ground of any type. So you're going to bring your knees to your chest in one snappy motion. You want to go from full extension, holding it long, to pulling it in right away. Speed is key here. You're going to work up this exercise so that you can snap into your tuck very quickly because that's what translates to speed in the actual back tuck. First, it'll be important to do it slow. Get the positions properly and do them slowly. You don't have to rush your first time doing it, but make sure you keep that end goal in mind that you want to be doing this exercise really quickly. When you hit your tuck position, you want your knees to be touching your shoulders. Use your arms to help you pull tight and just try to get into the tightest ball you can. Even tucking itself, some people underestimate actually training your tuck position. Um, there's a little bit of flexibility involved and you want to be able to snap directly to that position really quickly so that in the air, um, every millisecond counts. You, you don't want any buffer time as you're pulling your knees up to your chest. Um, you want that to be really quick and really well trained. So why is a back tuck difficult? Or why is it difficult to master a back tuck? I think it comes down to these two body positions where when you jump into the air, you're fully extended, hollow body position, you're as long as you could possibly be, and then you have to snap into the tightest ball possible, which is essentially using all the opposite muscles to pull your body into the exact opposite shape you were just in. This exercise right here is essentially an opportunity for you to practice these body positions one by one, and then practice them in the context of tucking from your hollow body to your tuck position. In order for this exercise to translate into really good back tuck technique, you have to drill this exercise with perfect technique. 
Um, so that means starting off slowly, making sure your hollow body is perfect first of all. Um, and even that, if you're just starting out, that can actually take months, if not years, to actually get your proper hollow body position. It takes some people longer than others, especially for something like a, like a handstand, where shoulder flexibility also comes into play. For a back tuck, it doesn't matter as much. It's more a matter of jumping and not over flexing and then losing your power there. What you should do, especially if you have a carpeted area at home or some grass or just some soft surface like a yoga mat, do this back tuck exercise five to ten times a day. Not even any more than that. You don't have to overdo it. If you do it five to ten times a day, right when you wake up, right before you go to bed, maybe even both, if you do that over several months or several years, you will definitely build a lot of strength in these exact positions. Yeah, it's getting dark fast. Um, eventually maybe I'll make a part two to this video because in this video I think I discuss more the physical elements of the back tuck but I think in a separate video I should talk about a little bit of my mindset and how I think about back tucks including one specific piece of technique um, in regards to how long you should wait when you jump in the air. Very quickly right now I don't think you should wait very long in the air. Waiting for the peak um, is not always necessarily the strongest way to do it. In fact, I like to jump off the ground, explode upwards, make sure your body position is perfectly straight in hollow body, and then as soon as I leave the ground, I actually start pulling my tuck so that I can be fully tucked at the peak instead of starting to tuck at, at the peak of the jump, which is actually, I think, where a lot of people get thrown off and miss out on being able to have a stronger tuck, but they're waiting too long to pull the jump. There are certain important elements for teaching it this way and telling people to wait, but I think I'll save all this for the second video because it, it, it deserves a certain amount of time on its own just to get through this topic. If there's any questions you guys have about back tuck or anything about this exercise or anything that I didn't even bring up at all, let me know and I'll include it in that video as well so I can talk about as many things that you guys might want to hear about as possible. Now, before the sun goes down, let me show you one quick thing. Alright, so... I know I'm a little bit cut off right now for the framing, but I just want to show you this really quick. The first position, the hollow body that you jump into, right? So the hollow body position that you do on the ground, which is slightly forward shaped, slightly banana shaped, right? Um, when I say you want to jump into that position for your back tuck, I mean that very literally. You want to jump into that exact position. And what that does is it prevents you from doing this. Ugh. It's very important that you don't arch back when you jump into the air. If you're trying to pull your tuck from this position, your legs have a lot farther to go. If you jump into hollow body position, you don't let your arms swing back too much and you don't let yourself become arched back. You, if you jump into this position, technically you should be able to see your feet still if you look down. And that means your feet and your knees actually have a, a direct path, a straight line to come into this tuck. They don't have to come from all the way back here, all the way around. Um, like 270 degrees. It can come straight from here, literally a straight line, and then your tuck can be really fast. Also training this hollow body position, if you train your arms to swing up and stop here when you jump, right? Boom! Um, that's almost like they can bounce off that point because you've trained your muscles that they don't go past that point. So your body jumps, it hits this point, and then you can almost like bounce off that right into the tuck. That's almost how I think about it. Um, you, you want to be tight hitting that position because if you're loose, then you're going to be loose coming back in. Oh, oh that kind of hurt. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's upload and I hope you find the tips helpful for your training. I'm trying to keep up the samplers and mini samplers in each edit, but I didn't go to the gym this week, so I don't have any fresh clips to upload this week, so I'm actually going to upload a little edit that I made a few months ago, back when we were about a month into the first lockdown um, in early summer. A few of us met up and we kind of kept a lot of distance from each other and we just kind of threw tricks together in the same vicinity. It was a really weird session, but I brought my camera and I filmed it and it was a really good time um, just to hang out with each other. and. Everyone was really strong just from tricking on grass at that point. And then when we started tricking in the gym, everyone was super strong. Um, so that was really interesting. But yeah, this was just a fun little session, a fun little edit. I'm going to throw it on here because I only have it on Instagram at this point. Hope you like it. And thanks again for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments any questions you have. And feel free to reach out to me and send me videos if you want tips on your back tuck. Instagram is probably the easiest place to find me and send me videos. But yeah, let me know what you think about this week's tips. And good luck with your training, guys. I will see you next week.